This presentation focuses on residential recycling, specifically residential curbside recycling. It talks about the reasons and justification for doing residential recycling using single stream recycling, collection, and processing. So what is single stream recycling? Single stream recycling allows households to place designated recyclable materials all mixed together into a single recycling cart or bin, which makes it very convenient for the residents of the household to participate. It also makes it more economical for companies that pick up the recyclable materials because they use a single compartment collection truck that can compact and take all the recyclable materials together to the processing facility. So does single stream recycling make sense in terms of how it's implemented and in terms of cost? The goal has always been to achieve a lower net cost for recycling when you consider both the cost to collect the materials and to process the materials. The companies that collect recyclable materials curbside have reported up to 20% savings in cost compared to separate collection mm -hmm. of paper in containers. However, because all the materials are mixed together, there are additional processing costs at the processing facility to unwind all the materials. So how is it that recycling collection costs are reduced with single stream recycling. For one, less time is spent by the driver at each curbside stop since the driver does not have to sort the material at the pickup location. Secondly, the driver can fully load a single compartment compaction truck whereas separate collection techniques have two compartment compaction trucks, one for paper and one for containers. And if either one of those compartments fills up, the driver has to stop and then go to the recycling processing facility. The automated single stream trucks also carry a greater payload, which enables the driver to stay out on the route longer and pick up more stops per day. The current trend for single stream recycling is to issue households recycling carts instead of the smaller recycling bins. The recycling carts typically have a 65 to 95 gallon capacity compared to the smaller recycling bins which only have an 18 to 22 gallon capacity. Plastic carts with lids are also an advantage since material can be placed into the cart and then when it's taken out to the curb the lid is closed preventing wind from blowing material out of the cart and thus preventing litter in the neighborhood. The automatic collection vehicles come with mechanical arms to grab, lift, and empty materials into the collection vehicle and this reduces job-related injuries and workmen's compensation costs since the driver no longer has to get out, bend over, and lift recycling bins into the truck. Recycling carts with lids have additional advantages. When lids are on the cart, it keeps out rain, snow, ice, and slush, and also helps to prevent rodents and insects from entering the container. This keeps the material dry and in better condition when it's delivered to the processing facility. Unfortunately, there are some hidden additional costs associated with the use of recycling carts with lids. The reason is that the collectors that come and pick it up at curbside never get to see what's actually in the cart. And if consumers put in non-recyclable materials, they're not able to see it. Whereas before, with an open recycling bin, 
they could see the non-recyclable materials and actually reject the materials. So what's happening is there are more non-recyclable materials that are coming to the processing facility than previously experienced. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. The recycling bin on the left, you can see the materials, and if there's contamination, you can prevent it from being collected. On the right, there's a recycling cart with a lid, and the driver has no idea what's in that cart, and will still put all the materials into the recycling collection truck, which will wind up at the recycling processing facility. In summary, you have to outweigh the advantage of having households put more designated recyclable materials into a recycling cart, which creates greater convenience and higher quantities of recyclable materials to be collected, with the drawback that contamination is added to the recycling cart. And in fact, over the past several years, the contamination has risen from 5% to 15% as a result of households mistakenly putting non-designated materials into the recycling cart and the drivers unable to prevent collecting it at the curb. With the advent of larger recycling carts with lids where the households can put in more recyclable materials, it is increasingly important to have them educated as what can and cannot be put into the bin. Ultimately, they will lower their cost of recycling and lower their overall solid waste disposal cost if they get it right in the first place. So what does it cost a typical household to have separate residential single stream recycling pickup from their household, typically once per week? It averages about $4.50 per household per month in the Chicago suburban area. Some costs are higher and some costs are lower depending on how the layout of a particular community is. How many stops the driver makes in a day, what's the time and distance between each stop, and how far does the recycling truck have to drive to go to and from the recycling facility. Uh, here are just three examples of actual costs per month based on competitive bidding for single stream recycling collection. Glencoe, Illinois, $5.35 a month. Rolling Meadows, Illinois, $3.59 a month. Skokie, Illinois, $4.57 a month. To determine the cost per ton for a typical Midwest suburban single stream recycling collection program, we need to look at the cost per household per year and divide it by the number of tons of recyclable materials generated from that household per year. Using a cost of $4.50 per household per month, for the collection of recyclable materials times 12 months a year equates to $54 per year per household. The average household would produce approximately 80 pounds of recyclable materials per month or 960 pounds per year, which equates to 0.48 tons per year, approximately a half a ton per year. So the recycling collection cost per ton is $54 a year, which is the annual household collection cost, divided by 0.48 tons per year, which is the tons of recyclable materials generated from the household. In this case, the cost per ton for the recycling collection would be $112.50. This table gives the range of percentage by weight of the commodities that are typically in 
single stream. Aluminum cans 0.4 to 1.3 percent, steel cans 1.4 to 3.7 percent, PET beverage containers 1.8 to 4.9 percent, HDPE natural, which are your milk jugs and water jugs, 1.1 to 2.2 percent, HDPE pigmented, which are your laundry and detergent bottles, 1.2 to 2.1 percent. Number three through number plastic containers, which are your linear low density polyethylene, PVC, and polypropylene containers, 0.7 to 2.5 percent. Mixed broken glass, your bottles and jars, 11 to 18 percent. Aseptic packaging, typically around 0.02 percent. Newspaper, 38 to 50 percent, although it is declining as more and more consumers go to digital media for their news. Mixed paper, 6 to 18 percent. Cardboard, 5 to 11 percent. And residuals, meaning the non-recyclable materials that people inadvertently place into their recycling bin even though they shouldn't is 9 to 18 percent.